ladies and gentlemen, the ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Kansas Jayhawks are joining us in the interview room here momentarily. Just want to remind everyone in this room, uh, when you do have a question, please raise your hand and wait for a microphone to get to you. No flash photography, no recording of video in the interview room. Perry Ellis. Landon Lucas. Wayne Selden. Mason and Graham. Mason, then Graham on the end. Welcome to Friday, guys. Good to see you. As the Jayhawks get settled here, we're going to do the format slightly differently. No opening statement today. We're going to go right to questions for Coach and the student athletes. And uh, it can be for either or. And please if, uh, address your question to a particular student athlete or to Coach. And we'll get started right here on the right front side there. Danny Klinkskill, Sports Radio 810, WHB in Kansas City. Uh, Coach, uh, do you see any similarities, not in the way your teams played, but kind of the structure of the fact that both teams are kind of veteran teams that hadn't had much tournament success, got past that, have played great in the tournament? Uh, are there similarities there? Well, I, I, I don't know if I totally agree uh, with that because both programs have experienced success in the tournament. You know, we, we uh, neither one of us have a lot in the last couple of years. So, so. Uh, uh, I, I see some similarities, you know, they're, they're a veteran team, even though, you know, uh, um, you know, Brunson's a freshman and, and uh, uh, they have some uh, young guys off, off the bench that are going to be tremendous players, uh, uh, but we do too. Our, our, our bench is very young as well for the most part, but I, I see some similarities. I, I think that, I think that uh, the similarities are, are more personnel driven, you know, they're, they're, you know they've got a they got a really really skilled four man and we've got a really skilled four man and and um, they're all all their guards can beat you off the bounce and that's very similar to our guards but but uh, uh, the thing that I I do love about their team and I always have is how how hard they play and how scrappy they are. 
Okay, we'll go here right on the aisle on the right side. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Tracy from the New York Times. Uh, I wanted to ask about buzzer beaters. There have been several kind of prominent ones uh, in the tournament so far. Uh, Frank and Wayne, uh, there was in the OU game, there were a couple of close calls, and I think, Frank, you hit one last year against TCU maybe. Um, I was wondering if it's a thing you guys practice in practice, you know, like tough, long-distance shots at the buzzer. And, and also for coach, I was wondering if there's like kind of like a matrix, like a two-point conversion matrix, where if you're down five, you have a certain thing to do in, in, in order to try to try to get up and get tie the game or win the game with very little time left. Well, I, I think from my vantage point, it, it's, it's uh, kind of by feel. Uh, uh, you know, if it's a two-possession game, I, I would probably try to score quick uh, and take the best shot available. Uh, not necessarily having to be a three, but I, I don't have a matrix uh, 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 that, that or, or a formula that we go by that this is what we do when this when it's you're down five with 30 left or you're down four with 20 left. Uh, uh, I think if we're down three with five left seconds, then we'll try to shoot a three though. So, but that that's about it. Thanks, Coach. Left side. Bill Bob Lutz from the Wichita Eagle. You were at Perry's first high school game back in 2008. Uh, it was a Friday night. I think you had a game the very next day. Uh, can you discuss the process of recruiting him and then also coaching him, what, what that's uh, been like to get him to, to get to the level he's at today? We, we probably spent as much time on, on Perry recruiting him as, as anybody, just because we were so aware of him uh, at an early age and a young age. and, and um, and, and Danny Manning was our point man in, in his recruitment, for the most part. And, and uh, but but you know he was an e he was an easy guy to recruit because he, he he wasn't seeking attention. And just like he is now, he's not seeking attention. So he was a fun guy to recruit because you know he, it wasn't like you had to talk to him every day to be honest with you in order to to let him know that you love him a lot, which you have to do with a lot of recruits. Uh, if you told him that maybe on. Monday, then by Friday, he would still believe that there was probably still some love in, involved, uh, uh, which is a little different uh, for, for, for some recruits. But uh, he was an easy recruit, uh, uh, great family, and, and certainly coaching him, it, it's, it's been a real treat because, and it has been for all our guys, because just watching how he's matured off the court so much, in my opinion, which has is, which is really spearheaded his, his development on the court. Uh, and and uh, and just see how how, how he's, he's kind of grown not only into a great player but a but a, but a really an outstanding young man as well. Let's go on the right side aisle here and then to the left. Uh, Bill uh, John Clark from Comcast Sportsnet in Philadelphia. When you look at Villanova these first three games, their shooting percentage is up yeah. there in the history of the tournament, making a ridiculous number of threes. In your preparation in years past for games like this, are they playing as well as as any team you can remember? Well, you know, preparation is so short. I mean, we're, we're talking about a 45-minute practice today and, and, and scouts, you know, so there will probably be more time prepping for, for Nova uh, uh, off the court as far as film work or, or, or getting guys to understand scouting report than there probably will be on the court. Uh, uh, but, yeah, they're probably playing as well as anybody that, that, that we've gone against uh, in recent memory, at least that I can recall. Uh, you know, they're, they're on fire right now. and. and and uh, you know it's it's one thing to shoot a high percentage, but to shoot that higher percentage with the with the the volume of threes they've been shooting makes it even more impressive. So, uh, and they're doing and everybody's making them. It's not like you can just key on one guy. I mean, everybody's been shooting them well. So, uh, they're they're a red hot team right now. But you know, honestly, we we've been we've been we've been playing pretty well ourselves, and so uh, we won't want to change how we're playing, but we certainly need to emphasize on, on, on how to get to their shooters and, and certainly uh, still guard the ball and keep it out of the paint. Just a reminder, we have the student athletes till about 310, just to let you guys know that. Let's go on the left side in the green and then over on the right. Bill, just, just along the lines of the three-pointer, um, you guys shoot quite a high percentage, but not as many as other teams might shoot at times. And I just wonder how your philosophy of, of shooting, taking the threes it, it maybe has evolved. If, I remember at times you've looked at it as fool's gold. I think that's one of your terms for it. No, I, well, you know, uh, I have said making jump shots all the time and not playing through the post some or driving the ball can be fool's gold. Uh, 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 making threes is not uh, uh, at all, but, but that can't be the way we play all you rely on. Uh, you know, I've always been a guy that played inside out, and, and this year we probably play less inside out than we have. Uh, 
but but the bottom but the the reality of it is we we've got in my opinion uh really really good shooters on the perimeter and i, th I think every coach plays to his strengths uh so so uh, uh certainly I, I you know people say that i don't shoot as many well we don't shoot as many threes i guess statistic statistically that could be accurate but that's not something that we we want to shoot a certain percentage or anything like that i, I thought last night we 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 were pretty efficient and we shot nine and there's been some games where we've taken 52 shots and shot 25. Uh, uh, I think a lot of times defenses dictate how many you take as opposed to a, an actual game plan offensively. Go uh, right side here and then in the back on the left. Hi, guys. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, I'll ask this of Coach, and then if one of the players wants to also answer it as well, I'd love to get a player perspective on it. You said the key to winning games is even when you're not playing great, keeping the other team from going on their runs. Yeah. And sometimes that's easy to plan for, but not as easy to execute. So physically and mentally, how do you prevent a team from going on runs when you're not playing great at that moment? Well, I, I, you know, my, my philosophy has always been if, if, you know, if the other team can't score, you can't lose. Uh, uh, and that's not a realistic, I mean, that's not a real thing, but, but, but I think it hopefully drives a mindset that, that you know, defense matters, and 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 uh, uh, in the tournament, I, I I really feel this way, is that when you play a team like Villanova, uh, if you let them be who they've been the first three games in the tournament, you've got to play at a ridiculously high level to play, to shoot the ball like that, and 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 to 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 score the ball that easy. So your focus a lot of times is making sure they can't be as comfortable as what they've been in the first three games. And so I, I really believe that that's, that's it as much as anything, is not let your opponent play well. And, and when you don't let your opponent play well, you may feel like you're not playing well, but you look up and you know, you're still up two or you're only down two, and, and there hasn't been much separation in times where, where you're not very good. Perry, can you follow up on that one? Um, you know, yeah, I feel like, you know, team, we know that teams can go on runs, and um, we know as a team that you know, we try not to let that happen. And if it does happen, you know, defense is always key. And uh, we try not, we, we really try to make sure defense is, is our key main focus because uh, if we're not thinking about our offense, you know, it really, it really helps us. Thank you. Let's go in the back, CL, and then we'll go over on the right side. Bill, CL Brown, ESPN.com. Uh, yesterday, Norm Roberts said that there was an emphasis on having the guys play for pleasure, not pre pressure, was his term. Um, in what ways is that different? In what ways have you prepared this team kind of differently for this tournament as opposed to the recent past? Uh, you know, you know, I think I think going into tournaments, there, there's a, a lot of times that that you know teams are 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 you know on an upward uh, uh, incline uh, on an uptick. When, when you're healthy, when you've been on a little bit of a run, where you, where you played well in your conference. And, and sometimes, you know, whether it be health or, 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 or distractions or whatnot, can, can keep a team from probably being its best and going into the tournament. In the last couple of years, that's been us, be real candid. We, we haven't been whole. And, and so this year, you know, fortunately, knock on wood, we've been whole. And, and, and I think that has as much to do with anything, with, the, with us being more confident. But, but uh, you know, I, I, I saw an expression uh, uh, that never let the pressure exceed the pleasure. And, and uh, I thought it was pretty accurate with our guys. And, and I shared that with them after we won, after we clinched the, the, uh, the Big 12. Uh, uh, you know, guys, now, hey, we've already done what we set out to do uh, for the regular season. Now, let's just, let's just play with pleasure the rest of the way. I mean, and there's no pressure to win the league. We've, we've already done that. So let's play with pre pleasure. And I don't know if that has anything to do with how, why we played pretty well of late. But I do think it's real important this time of year to, to, to enjoy the moment. Uh, you've earned the right to enjoy this moment. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you put yourself in a, in, a, in a favorable position. Enjoy it. Have fun. And, and so that's kind of been our message. Let's go on the far right side here. And then we've got about four questions here in the left. Steve Greenberg with Bleacher Report. Uh, this is for, for Bill and Perry. Uh, Perry was a valedictorian in high school. You know, he comes from a family. Parents they were athletes. They worked with kids. I imagine you figured you were getting a pretty solid person when he came in. I want to ask you how he's grown, though, if he had any growing up to do, how, how he has 
grown since then? And Perry, how you think you have over four years of college? Well, I, I think that, you know, he, he's obviously a very, very bright young man, uh, uh, both on the court and in the classroom. And, and uh, uh, the way I, I think he's grown as much as, as anything is, is uh, 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 you know, he's always been very, very quiet and reserved. And, and uh, uh, to see how he, he handles situations uh, publicly and, 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 and uh, through the media or with his teammates, uh, uh, you know, he exudes confidence. And I think that's as much how he's grown as anything else. He's, he, he's, he's always been rock solid, but I, I think he's, he's much more comfortable uh, in public settings than maybe what he was early. And yeah, co confidence was the biggest thing. Uh, you know, each year, you know, I felt like I've more confident in my skin, which helped me speak to people and be comfortable. So that was the key thing for me. Let's get one more question on the right, and then we'll get you guys all right here. Uh, Michelle Gordon with ESPN. Uh, question for Frank and Wayne. Uh, with the game time being pretty late tomorrow, 8.49, 8.50, I believe, how, what are you guys planning on doing to kind of use up the time tonight, but especially tomorrow, all the waiting and what are you guys planning on doing to, to help fill it? Wayne first, please. Well, our game the other night was around the same time. So just do the same thing we did pretty much, which was just wake up, eat breakfast. I think we did shoot around. Then we ate again. And by that time, it was <laughs> time to play, I think. <laughs> OK. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, same as Wayne. Uh, well, we got up. We ate breakfast. Um, we watched a little bit of film. Uh, we went to shoot around. and. We ate again. Um, we got to lay around for a little bit, and then we came back and watched some more film and uh, just got ready for the game. Okay, I'm going to let the uh, KU student athletes go to the breakout room, which is back that way. We get to keep coach with us. And uh, I think, yeah, we'll just go right here in this block right here on the left side. Uh, Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, coach, last year at this time, Kentucky was undefeated, number one over, overall, and everybody saw them with a target on their back. Your team seems to have embraced the whole pros versus Joes underdog role, even though you're the number one overall seed. Is that the mentality you want to create, or do you want them to, to act like they should be the number one? Uh, I, you know, I, I the, the underdog role, I, I don't think that anybody's ever – I've never said that to our guys. Uh, I may I may repeat what maybe some some analysts have said, but but uh, I, I don't. To, to me, uh, 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 I'm confident in our guys. I think if we play well, we'll have a we'll have an opportunity to win. And so, uh, you know, if we don't play well, we're, we're, our talent level is not such that that opportunity is near as high to win. But uh, I, I, I really believe that our, we've got a good team, and I've been telling them all along that I believe they we got a good team, and and uh, you know it's always nice to have a chip, uh, and and maybe our guys do have a chip, but but uh, it hasn't been something that that we've emphasized from a, a disrespect standpoint at all. I think people have respected us, or or, or we wouldn't have been ranked where we were, and 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 certainly uh, thought of highly by. By others, but but just because you you've achieved something, you, you don't rest on it. You want to build off of it, and, and uh, that's what I think our mindset's been is to build on what, what's transpired as opposed to rest on it. Kevin Haskin, to be Capital Journal, Bill, where have you seen this defense progress, especially during the win streak and the obvious? I guess how good will it have to be tomorrow? Well, it'll, it'll probably need to be as good as it's been all year tomorrow. Uh, uh, you know, you, you also got to hope that, 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 you know, they don't continue to shoot at such a high clip. Uh, but you, you also, you know, hope that you can put your guys in a position where, where, where they don't allow them to, to uh, be as comfortable to shoot uh, uh, at such a high percentage. But our, our defense has gotten better. It's, it's still a little bit inconsistent. Uh, our rebounding has gotten better, but it's still inconsistent uh, at times. But, but uh, this is a different team defensively than it was in January. But... You know, I, I don't know that it's a, an unbelievable team defensively compared to some of the teams we've had in our past, but I, I do think we've made huge strides in that area. Uh, Bob Ford, Philadelphia Inquirer. 
Uh, don't want to assume your matchups, Bill, but if, if uh, Ellis and Jenkins get to see something of each other at both ends of the court, what do you see as the advantages and disadvantages of those matchups for both guys? I mean, how do you see them pairing up a little bit? Well, I think, it'd be a, I think that'll be a key matchup. I, I do think that they'll guard each other uh, uh, a good portion of the time when they're in there together. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the challenges for us, obviously, and Perry would be getting to shooters. You know, even though he's, he can guard a perimeter player, but he's not used to guarding somebody that, that has the freedom and, and the ability to, to, to make hard, distant threes. Uh, uh, so, that, so that'll be different. And, 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 uh, and certainly with, 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 uh, with him, with Perry, I mean, I, uh, Jay would be able to answer that far better than, than I could. But it'll, it'll be two really good offensive players going against each other, though. Bill Bob Lutz from Wichita Eagle. Can you exp how how common is it for you to be at the first game of a high school career for a player? Second part of that, uh, what shortcomings does Perry have that may limit him at the next level? Uh, I don't think I, I'm sure. I I mean I've seen a freshman play before, uh, I believe, but I, I don't know if it's been in the first game of his career. Uh, you know, Perry was such a hyped kid coming in. I mean, as an eighth grader. Uh, uh, you know, everybody talked about he'd be the best player in the state as a freshman, and he turned out getting player of the year in the state as a freshman. So I think he's only four-time, isn't he, uh, state player of the year? Uh, uh, but but I, I do think that's very unusual. Uh, uh, and it's amazing to me what's important to families. That was really important to their family that I was there the first game. And it was luck because we weren't playing that night. If we'd been playing that night, I wouldn't have been there. So, uh, uh, but no, I, I and, and Perry's shortcomings, I, you know, I don't know that, that he has a lot of shortcomings. You know, he's, he's not a big four man, uh, uh, but he can stretch it and, and, and certainly put it down. And he's a, a good passer. And I think he can really defend his position. So I, I think he can really make an NBA team better. Uh, but but as, as far as uh, shortcomings, I, I think the thing that people don't realize, all college kids going to the next level is going to go through some struggles. Uh, regardless, and, and but I do think he's prepared to be a pro, and uh, and both on and off the court. Pat, uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Bill, some coaches who have gone to traditional powers like a UCLA, in North Carolina, or I'm sorry, UCLA, Kentucky, Indiana, haven't been that comfortable with the the historic import of the program. You seem to have embraced it at Kansas. Why have you been so comfortable with it? Well, I, I, I've I've. I'm really proud of everyone's successes that's that's been there. Uh, uh, you know, I, I took over a situation that that probably, in my mind, it may, it may have been easier to the to the outside uh, basketball world. But in my mind, I mean, that, that was a tough act to follow, uh, following Roy and all the success that he that he had there. Uh, but you know, he followed Larry, and Larry went to two Final Fours in five years and won a national championship. And he followed Ted and. He followed Dick Harp, and then he followed, you know, Coach Allen. I mean, uh, uh, there's been so much uh, history and success. I don't. Th and, and, and the other thing is, I don't think you, I don't think in Kansas, your your goal is to ever try to to be the best that's been there. That that's not going to happen. As a player, your goal is not to be the best player that's ever played there. That's not going to happen. Wilt played there, and 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 Fog Allen coached there. So so I I think it's it's something that that I don't feel like that we have to. Uh, hold ourselves to other standards, but 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 all, all but I, I I think I think if you embrace the tradition and the history and the success, it allows you to do a better job because uh, you can build off of that, you can recruit off of that, and that's something that we've always tried to do. All right, zigzag here, right, left, right, left, and that'll probably do it. And, and they had to get Naismith out of there because he couldn't win. Yeah, he was the only guy <laughs> that couldn't win, you know. There, so uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star, Bill. How, how late did you guys go before deciding Brandon couldn't go last night, and what's his status? I, I, I've, I've uh, suspected that he wouldn't be very effective for a while. He, 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 he was, we put him in in, in uh, Des Moines, and, and uh, I mean, every time he, 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 he turned, he winced. So, so uh, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a play in Des Moines where uh, there was a shot and a, a rebound came to his man, and he just reached out and grabbed him just reached out and grabbed him with the ball intentionally. And I said, what are you doing? He said, coach, I had, I can't move. And so I, I, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll check him out again, but, but he, he I, I don't think that he'll be available to us. 
left side. Bill, just one more thing on the, the three. Going back to your playing days, if I, if I have this right, your last year playing would have been the last year before the three-pointer came uh, into – no, nah, it was it was two years after. It was two that. years, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, did you did you when it came about? Did you wish you'd had that in the game when you were playing? And and the flip side of that is, it, it, how did you embrace it initially? And and how did how did how did you start incorporating it into your coaching? Well, I you know I was uh, uh well everybody wished they would have played with a three point line because if you go back, the way I remembered, I was a fabulous shooter uh, 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 back then. So. No, I wasn't a very, I, wa I wasn't a good shooter uh, uh, by a high standard at all. But, but I, th I think you know, three point line's been great for a game, and everybody would have loved to play, play with it. Uh, but as far as in incorporating it, you know, I, I don't know that there's been any one set thing that that we've done uh, to try to. Uh, I've always been, uh, you know, to me, field goal percentage, field goal percentage, defense, and rebounding have always been important elements to determining whether you win or not. Uh, and, and, you know, three-point field goal percentage is certainly part of field goal percentage, but, but uh, I think the emphasis to get good shots and, 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 and uh, has maybe, uh, maybe not allowed our guys to shoot as many as maybe some other teams. Doesn't mean that, that our shots are necessarily better. And I, will, I was taught by Coach Sutton, you know, if you can't score early, you want to give the defense a chance to break down. And so sometimes with, with that, you know, uh, that means the ball moves from side to side and, and, and makes it go from strong to, to weak, uh, the defense. And so I, I want to shoot as, if my guys were open, I want to shoot threes. I, I mean, that, but, and, and we've shot a higher percentage of threes this year than, than we have in the past, but the percentage has only been like three or four more percent. It's not like we're shooting a ton more threes this year. Let's try to squeeze one more in on the right side. Bill, Greg Eklund, this is for Kansas Public Radio. Last night you had talked about the trust that you've developed with this year's team. Since you're a, a fan of the Royals, have you found yourself as a coach observing the trust that Ned Yost developed between himself and the players, knowing that his players would go out and do the right thing to get themselves prepared? Uh, I am a fan, <coughs> and, and uh, certainly, you know, I heard, I heard uh, uh, Ned say that he didn't give one steal sign the whole year last year. The players did it on their own, uh, uh, which I thought was, you know, I don't know. I'm not a baseball manager, but I thought that was kind of unique uh, uh, that he trusted them that much. But I, I haven't tried to equate trusting our guys with the Royals. I, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of teams that I've trusted a lot. Uh, uh, but I, I think that this team particularly has, 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 has earned the staff's trust. Uh, because they, they try to do what we want them to do, and, and they don't, don't always do it, and, and certainly we don't always tell them the right things to do. But, but, but their focus and their effort to try to do that is is uh, is is about as high as any team that I've had. So I, I can't help but trust them because I, I feel like that uh, I feel like that they're 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 trying to be an extension of what the staff is actually trying to teach them to do. Coach, I think we had a couple more. Maybe we can get in here, in the front row here with these two guys. Ryan Fannin with Villanova Radio. Uh, Coach, uh, just a couple memories of some Villanova-Kansas games. Uh, love to get your uh, take on those. A couple years ago, the battle for Atlantis uh, game in the semifinals there, and then in 08 when you played Villanova in the Sweet 16 in Detroit on your way to your national championship. Well, in, in 08, we played really, really well the first half. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it played out, but we played very, very well the first half. And that, that team was on a roll at that time. Uh, uh, and we were able to hang on, and then, and then in Atlantis, you know, uh, 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 Nova kept us from playing with any rhythm at all. I mean, Wiggs and Joel were were freshmen, and, and they had young guys playing too. I mean, it was, uh, but 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 they outscrapped us, and and uh, certainly their 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 pressure and their press bothered us at times, and and uh, you know, but we had a one point lead with, you know, uh, out of bounds under Villanova's ball, and. And, and Ryan makes a three to, to win the game. Uh, uh, so so uh, if I'm not mistaken, by two, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, not, not a good memory, but, but one that I think that we, we certainly uh, grew from. But, you know, I, I, th I think that the teams his historically, at least with in the times we played, have been pretty evenly matched. And we got the best of one, and they got the best of one. Stay down here in the front. Go. 
Rick Plummer with Schlegel. Speaking of Ryan, I can't pronounce his name. Um, Archie Diacono. Very good. I think, <laughs> I think that's right. So. The, uh, you, you mentioned the scrappiness of the team, and he's certainly one of their scrappers. Yeah. Does, does every team need a Ryan Arch type guy? Uh, well, I think every team would love to have uh, uh, Ryan as their point guard or as one of their lead guards. There's, there's no, who, we, we would too, we'd love to have Ryan. I, I don't know if there's a college program in the country that wouldn't love to have him. Uh, but but the, the, the things that he does well, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great leader, he's tough, probably as much as anything else. And he, he, he does such a good job of playing at different speeds and getting guys off balance. And, and uh, uh, you know, he, he gets inside of people because he's so good with the ball, shot fakes, or he's got great feet. But but he's a winner. I, I think I heard Jay say that that you know he he could basically coach his team uh, uh, because he's heard his voice so many times and and, and uh, he knows exactly what Jay wants. And and there's times that he is he could be just the instead of being an extension of him, he could actually run things. And, and maybe I maybe I misheard the quote, but I thought Jay said something like that. So uh, uh, you know. Uh, I, I don't. I think that Frank and Devonte are totally different in in their approach and how they lead, but uh, but I certainly think that Ryan is one of the best leaders and one of the best guards in the country. On the right, Bill, you had said last night that you you felt that Wayne brought a confidence out onto the floor at just the right time when you needed it, a confident presence. Yeah. In what ways does that manifest itself to you and to his teammates? Well, to, to me, Wayne, Wayne is, uh, you know, Wayne loves the moment. There's a lot of players out there that do, but uh, uh, he, he's the one guy to me with our team that when you run bad offense and don't have anything going, he can get a shot. He can go get his own shot or, he, or, or he's got a quick release or he can get a, a three up or make a big shot that's guarded. And, and, and I do think it gives guys confidence knowing that, that uh, you know we're struggling right now, but we can. But but you know if we can't play through Perry, then then Wayne's a guy that that will make a big play, and he's done that a lot. Even when he sh even when he hadn't shot the ball well in games, he's made some huge shots for us. Uh, and I, I think the guys get confidence from that. And the other thing they get confidence from is he can do some things physically uh, that that our other little guards can't do. Uh, because you know he can play above the rim, you know he can do some, you know he can he can post, he can do some things that that I do think through that it gives our guys uh, confidence as well. Anything else for coach? All right, all right, Thanks. thank you we'll guys. See you tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> Archie Giacomo, Ryan, Ryan Arch, O'Cheffy, Hart, Jenkins, Brian.
Brunson. Brunson is the last one.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Villanova Wildcats are on their way to the interview room. And a reminder, we have the student athletes until 4 o'clock, and then they're released to the uh, breakout rooms. And Coach Wright will be with us until 4.20. Okay, as the Wildcats get uh, settled here, if you have questions, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. And we begin today with uh, questions straight for coach or for the student athletes, but please identify the person uh, you would like to ask the question to. So we'll start, where are we with the mics? Who's got a mic over here? We'll just start here on the left side and kind of zigzag around. Coach Wright, CL Brown, ESPN.com. Your offense right now is number two nationally in adjusted efficiency. I was wondering if this was something that you kind of built, like how you tinkered your way into constructing, you know, a team that could be this efficient. Yeah, that's one of the things with this group. Um, early in the season, we felt like we had a chance uh, to be a really efficient offensive team because everybody was so skilled, and when when you have a uh, a five-man like Daniel Achefu, who's a as skilled as any of the guards, great decision maker, ball handler, passer for his position, extremely skilled. That usually the other guys are skilled, but when you have a guy like that at the five spot, you know you got a chance to be pretty good. And uh, and, and I think these guys have have really worked hard to to fulfill our expectations. Staying on the left side here. Uh, Ryan, I'm curious what you remember about the last game against Kansas uh, back in November 2013 and the, and the shot you hit at the end of the game. Um, we knew that was a, uh, a grinding out street, uh, street fight type of game. It was uh, not a very high scoring game. I don't think either team had any rhythm offensively. It was a defensive battle. Um, guys all over the floor and um, just uh, all over the place rebounding and uh, taking charge and everything like that. But the shot I hit was... Uh, I think my only shot I made the whole game, and um, we were fortunate enough to just get the win and get a stop after that. Bob Ford, Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Chris, I don't want to assume your matchups will let coach coach the team, but uh, if you are matched up against Ellis during this game or see some of him, what are the advantages you think you might have and some of the advantages that he might have? How do you think that would play out if that is part of the matchup tomorrow? Um, well, we don't really have matchups. We have five guys playing the ball, so. I don't really, really look at that. He's a great player. They're a great team. And uh, we'll be ready. We're looking forward to it. When there's Matt Moore in front of him, would you be able to stretch him a little bit? Um, just play with confidence, play aggressive, and know that my teammates got my back. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philly Inquirer for Ryan. Um, uh, what are the challenges presented by a Frank Mason, who's their uh, defensive spark plug? Uh, what would it be like against a guy that apparently plays with the same intensity as you? 
Um, yeah, we know he's, he's quick. He's a great on-ball defender, and uh, they're a great defending team. And on the offensive end, he, uh, he dribble penetrates and finds guys, and he finishes at the rim. So he's going to create some problems for us. But uh, like I said before, we're going to have to defend them as a team and um, just kind of attack his aggressiveness on defense. Uh, this is for Chris. Ken Corbett from the Topeka Capital Journal. At the end of the first half last night, you hit a long three-point shot. Could you just take us through that shot and your awareness of the shot clock and your position on the court and also just talk about your improved three-point shooting recently? Well, the shot clock was running low. I think I got the ball with like three seconds left and you know, I just wanted to give us a chance to score and uh, the shot just happened to go in. And uh, you know, I just try to stay aggressive and make the right play. And you know, recently the, the right play is just for me to catch and shoot. My teammates do a great job in finding me in the open spots, and you know, a lot of the credit goes to them. Stay on the left side here, then we'll hit the right. Uh, this one's for Coach and for Ryan, if I could. Um, Calis Robinette with the Wichita Eagle. Uh, both Kansas and Villanova have really rolled through the NCAA tournament so far, playing as good as anybody. I'm just curious, based on the way both teams are playing, do you see this as a true heavyweight fight that you see play out in the NCAA tournament? We're just, uh, it's our biggest game of the year because it's our next game, and um, we know that they, they played well throughout the whole Big 12 season. I know we all saw it, and uh, we were playing pretty well throughout the Big East season, and um, we're going to play with confidence. We know they're going to come in with confidence, too, so uh, we know it's going to be an, an ugly game, and we'll try to make it that way, and um, hopefully we can um, get, the, get the win at the end. I, I, I know, you know, players look at it differently. They're, they're looking at... Um, you know, just next game, they're, they're wired in. I, I see the, the, the comparison, because I think both of us are playing our best basketball right now, and both of us have played pretty well during the season. Um, so in that sense, I do, I do see it as a heavyweight battle of two teams playing really well. I think um, both teams are really balanced. They are very, very talented at every spot. They're very disciplined, um, very well coached. Um, I hope we are. And, and um, it, 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 you know, yet it's one seed, two seed, and, and teams that um, I think feel very good about how they're playing. So I, I, I would say that's a, a heavyweight matchup. We have four questions on the right side here. We'll just kind of swing around from starting in the back. Hi, guys. Uh, I'd like to ask both Arch and Daniel to take this one. Do you feel like you have a good handle on whatever it is that went wrong in the tournament? The, I'm sure it wasn't the same situation each time, but uh, in, in, in these previous years, and, and how comfortable and confident are you that whatever it is, you're past it, you figured it out, and, and, and at least that won't you know, be the thing that gets you again? Daniel, first, please. Um, we haven't really changed anything we've done uh, based on you know, our shortcomings in the past tournaments, but you know, this year, just for myself and Ryan, just because of that last going round, the intensity has risen naturally, and uh, you know, our guys, Guys like Jalen, Mikhail, Phil, young guys are just stepping up and playing like upperclassmen. And then my other fellow upperclassmen, Chris, Josh, and Daryl, they've just they been playing like seniors. So it's just, you know, just all of us locking in and uh, staying committed to our core values. And, you know, we haven't really done anything different. Yeah, I think we've just been uh, focusing on the little things, um, just taking it uh, step by step, day by day uh, throughout the whole season. And uh, not that we didn't do that the last couple of years, but I think it got to us. Uh, when we played a little bit more athletic teams, we tried to play the same style as them. But we just have to stay committed to how we how we play and just uh, try to beat teams with toughness and um, our smarts. Howie Kasoy, New York Post. Jay, you talked about during the Big East tournament that you wanted to make a run and get to the Final Four as much for these guys as you did for the Big East, that you wanted to help get respect back. I guess now that you are one game away from potentially doing that, do you feel that that would go a long way to restoring some of the respect that the league had when you were coaching for so many years? I do. My, my first responsibility is, is to these guys, and I really would love to see these guys play in the Final Four. I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying um, watching them play and, um, and just being along for the ride with them and just watching them uh, really enjoy challenges. You know, they, they really are, are fired up, focused. Uh, the, the players have taken over all the responsibility, and, and that's really fun to be a part of as a coach. You don't get that a lot. 
And as far as the Big East is concerned, that would be a byproduct of watching these guys be really successful and, and get to a Final Four. Um, and, and I think we're a new league. We, we, we're going um, to go by our record and we're going to go by our accomplishments. So if we can do that for the league, uh, I do think it would, it would help our respect level. And, um, and if we can be a part of that, I'd, I'd be really proud to do that. Bright side in the front. Danny Klinkscale, WHB Kansas City. Uh, right, Perry Ellis has always been a good player, and this year he's been even a greater scorer. But in the last eight games, he's taken it to even another level, and nobody really seems to have done anything like crazy special double teams or anything else. I don't expect you to give me your game plan on Perry, but why do you feel like nobody has tried junk defenses, double teams, whatever? Why, why do you think that that is? It's, it's a good question, and it's something we've had to – struggle with preparing for them they're they're very well coached if, if you put too much attention on on Perriello's they they have they have a, a system and a scheme to take advantage of that and get everybody else easier shots and um, the other players are very talented so it's not like there's a P Perry Ellis um, for his position one on one is is an outstanding player, uh, but it's not like there's a large uh, amount of distance between him and his teammates for their position. So you just can't do it. You, you got to try to play them straight up, and uh, and if you give them too much attention, they have a way of getting, you know, Selden going. You know, that Graham gets. I mean, Graham was was the MVP of the tournament, right? The Big Twelve tournament. So. If, if you give them too much attention, these guys, these guys, every every one of these guys can kill you. Kevin Cooney, Calkins Media. Daniel, I know you're used to this question, but how was the ankle, and was there any problems this morning when you woke up after what happened last night? Uh, my ankle's fine. You know, it was a, a little sore this morning, but you know, it's just that's just how it's been for the past couple of weeks. You know, I got some treatment, and I'm feeling good. I, I'll be ready to go come game time. Tim Sullivan, uh, Louisville Courier Journal. Coach, you referred to this as a heavyweight bout. And in light of where we are and where you're from, <laughs> are you Ali or Frazier and why? Wow. <laughs> I was hoping no one would ever ask me that here. Um, I'm a Philly guy. You know, I was, I was always Joe Frazier uh, with, with great respect for Muhammad Ali and, and especially everything he's done uh, outside of boxing with his life. And we, we've quoted him. But in Philly, Smoking Joe is the man, the, the underdog, the fighter, the Rocky. We, we love Smoking Joe. Okay, stay on the right here. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, I'll ask Josh and Chris, same question, uh, because Coach had said that he feels you all of you are making your best decisions right now at this point of the season, best decision making he's seen. What contributes to that? Where does that come from? How has that developed and why? I would just say with experience, um, you know, coach pushes us in the most difficult situations, um, you know, in practice every day. Um, so just that experience, just, you know, decision making is on us, being able to go in there and make the right play. Um, you know, me personally, I got to give Mikel Bridges you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of credit. He's, he, some, some days he kills me in practice, some days I have trouble making the right play against him, his length, his, you know, he's a great defender. But just the experience, you know, now we're, we got three seasons on the boat, you know, me and Chris kind of, kind of like seniors now. So just that experience, you know, just the repetition that coach push it, um, the position he coach, uh, he puts us in really is just, you know, helping us, you know, learn and be able to go in there and make the right play. Yeah, just like what Josh said, just the experience and, you know, our, our teammates are unbelievable. They push us each and every day, you know, Eric Pasco, who's a red shirt. Who, who couldn't travel with us, but you know, going against him every day in practice and in previous years, going against Javon Pinkston and James Bell, just just battling with those guys and learning from those guys, and of course learning from Arch and Daniel, and uh, just being pushed. You know, those guys do an unbelievable job of, of making all of us better. Let's go left aisle and then left front. Uh, Jerry Ahern, USA Today Sports for Chris. What does a, a night shooting the basketball like you had last night do for your level of confidence? And, and Jay, if you could follow up on what that does, the wrinkle that it gives you offensively. 
Well, my confidence stays the same. Just be aggressive. You know, my I play off my teammates. You know, off their energy, off the uh, off of our defense. So our defense fuels our offense. So my confidence it never it never gets too high, it never gets too low. Whether I shoot bad or whether I have a great shooting game, I, I always believe the next one's going in. So I always keep that mentality. Yeah, there's one there's one thing to to know a guy's a good shooter, seeing him in practice and and um, being with him every day in shooting drills. But it's 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 a different level of confidence for all of us on this dais when you you go through game after game in a season and and the guy hits big shots every time, the guy goes through some tough droughts but still comes back and hits a big shot at the end. I think Chris's um, shooting and confidence right now is giving all of us confidence that this guy could just get the ball anywhere on the floor and drill it against anybody anytime. Is that just because of what he's done in the last couple of games? Is we've we've lived this for a couple of years now. Um, he's always done this offensively. Where he's really improved is um, is we can really count on him defensively and, and rebounding. He had nine rebounds last night against a really good rebounding team. So we can keep him on the floor for long stretches, and, and he gives us tremendous confidence because he's, he's one of the great shot makers we've ever had. Left front. Ruben Frank, CSN Philly. Uh, this is for Jay. Uh, a lot of you guys talked last night about the, the first 10 minutes or so of the Seton Hall game and, and how kind of was a springboard for these last few games. Uh, what was the teaching point from that first half and really just the first eight or 10 minutes uh, that's kind of applied to these last three games? These, these guys are smart guys, you know. It, we, after the Seton Hall game, we went home and um, we, just, we just looked at, you know, let's, let's look at the first five, six minutes of this game. Let's just look at us. Look at our stances. Look at our eyes. Look at our aggressiveness. And we just said, that, do I, I showed them maybe three or four clips, and I said, do I, do I have to show you any more? And they all just said, nope. I said, that, that can't happen to us again. It happens to, if it happens again, we're going home. And that's all we did. It was that simple. And they, they just take it. There's, they get it. It's, it's, it's why it's been a great team to coach. You really, they're intelligent. You know, you just show them something, you explain it to them, and they just take it and go. And, and that's why I said they've owned that now. And, and they've really started games with great intensity. The right back, and then we'll go to the right front. Steve Greenberg, Bleach Report. Uh, I don't want to creep you out, Chris, but I keep looking at your face and seeing what I think is the very – the very start of a smile, but you don't always go beyond that. It's like that. Am I on anything there? I want to ask: Is whoever up there will maybe describe Chris, his demeanor, his personality? You guys take take a few stabs at it. I think that's just his. Uh, I think that's just his face. He always looked like he's mad and wants to smile. But you know, we all know Chris is a great guy and he has a great smile. So you know, just let it shine. <laughs> Don't touch me, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> he's a clown. He's a clown. He's putting on a good. He's putting on a, a good business face right now. He's 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 one of the clowns of our team. Danny Klink, Scale WHB again. This is for Ryan. Uh, you played against a very high-profile point guard last time, and no matter who you play against this time, it'll be the same thing. Your numbers are great. Team's record's great. Do you feel like you get the kind of attention that you deserve for how well you play, or do you carry a t chip on your shoulder about it? No, I think we, um, we've we gotten a ton of attention, and um, we appreciate it, but that's not what we try to focus on, try to focus on each other on the floor. But um, whether we play well or play play poorly, we know we're going to get that attention and people talking about us because it's a big game. But um, we, we can't really focus on that, and the matchups is more about our team versus their team. One more for the players. Jalen, I'll ask you this one. And um, hi, Janine, right here. Um, I asked the Kansas players the same thing, so I just want to compare and contrast. How will you guys be spending all the time you have tonight and all day tomorrow? What will you guys be doing? Will Coach have anything planned to keep you entertained or amused? What's the day look like? Um, I think uh, what makes us so special is that we, can be, we stay consistent. Uh, we do what we do. We, uh, we enjoy each other's company. Uh, we're going to keep everything the same. Uh, I mean... We, we all go into each other's rooms, do whatever we got to do before a game, night before a game. And uh, I think that consistency really has helped us. Oh, we're just we're going to um, do what we do on normal game days, uh, come and eat breakfast, just you know, talk to each other a little bit about anything and 
I mean, once it's time for the game time, start, to start preparing, we get our minds right. Okay, we're gonna let the uh, Villanova student athletes head to the breakout rooms. Be out that way to your left. Questions for Coach, we'll start here on the left side. We'll get back to UCL. Just go one, two, three, four. 20 minutes. Uh, Jay, I, I know you're into Big Five history. Um, two coaches in the Big Five have taken two teams, uh, taken a team to a Final Four twice. Ken Can Leffler I? at LaSalle and Harry Litwack. I, was, I wasn't going to get that one. OK, well. I was going to guess. You still got a passing grade. All right. Um, what would I didn't it mean? know Harry that what? Yeah, uh, Harry lasted in 58, so it's 58 years. Um, what, what would it mean to you to be the third Big Five coach to get a team to the Final Four? As you, as you know, Joe, I, I take great pride in being a part of uh, Philadelphia basketball. So anything that we do uh, with, with that, with, with the history of Philadelphia basketball, anything that we do means a lot to me. I, I, it doesn't. Um, it, it, it's not what inspires me, but after, I usually find out these things from you. Or, and then when you tell me, I, I love it. I do. It's, it's, I'm really proud of it. I, I, um, I, I, I'm really humbled to, to be mentioned with those names. Harry Litwack. I went to Harry Litwack's camp, you know, when I was a kid. So um, I just, it's, it's, it's an honor to be mentioned with those names. Although I would not have known LaSalle and Leffler. I would not have known that. I knew they went, but I, I didn't think about him as the coach. Uh, Jay, understand that you guys switch and help and everything, and Chris's answer was a good answer. But on those times when he and Ellis match up, if they do match up tomorrow, not assuming that. I think he doesn't want to match up. I think that's what he was – he was hoping he's not on them. <laughs> he doesn't I, want to deal with them. <laughs> I just think he was trying not to give a game plan. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, what are the advantages and disadvantages that you would see in those matchups from both sides? Bill said that he thought – from his standpoint, his guy would have to, might have to chase out a little more than he normally does, and he left it for you to say what the other side of that would be. Yeah. You know, where would where would Ellis have the advantage? I, I think um, what's unique about both of them is that um, they can. Both of them are going to have to chase each other, and both of them can post up. Now, now Perry can post up deeper, and use his size on Chris. Chris has got like a mid-range post-up game. Um, I think Chris might have a little, a little bit better range that would extend Perry. I think Perry's better driving the ball off the dribble that Chris is going to have to contain. Um, but they're both myth, mismatched nightmares, both of them. They are for everybody. You know, I, I don't mean just each other, but if you get a small guy on Perry Ellis, he's, he's posting him up. You get a bigger guy on him. And he's shooting if he gives him space. And if he comes up on him, he's driving by him. And Chris does the same thing. And those guys are really, really valuable in basketball. Forget college basketball. In the game of basketball, those guys are really valuable. And both of them are good decision makers. They're intelligent. You know, they're, um, you see some guys that are good ISO guys, but, but if you bring help to them or, or, or you trap them, they're not good decision makers. Both of them are good decision makers. <laughs> That's why I'm a coach and he's a player. He doesn't, he, he doesn't even know that. But he knows what to do when he gets the ball. I asked Ryan about the last time you guys played each other. I'm curious what you remember about the shot he hit to, uh, to win the game. Yeah, I remember that he had not made a shot and we had a baseline out of bounds late. And we were a really young team and they were a young team. They were younger than us because Wiggins and Embiid were freshmen. And all these guys were freshmen, too. Um, so they were actually younger. Um, and I was thinking, it was early in the season, and I was thinking, who are we going to run this play for? And I really thought, Arch hasn't made a shot. But if Arch misses this shot for game and we lose this game to Kansas, it will not affect Arch at all. Some of these other young guys, if they miss it, it could crush them for the season. That's really what I thought about. The other really unique thing about that game, and I, I think, uh, I think I told Bill this. Um, Wiggins, Wiggins had played 
I don't know, maybe one or two games before that. And, and, and um, you know, we were pressing a little bit. He had five turnovers. I think he was sick that day, too. And, you know, we, in the scouting report, pumped, pumped him up to our guys, how good he was. And in the game, he had like five turnovers, didn't play that well. And I said to our guys, I said, all right, watch this team. I said, you, you think they turned the ball over and we just beat them? All right, you don't, you don't think they're that good? This is why players need coaching. Wiggins had five turnovers. I guarantee you by the end of the season, this kid will be one of the top picks in the draft. And the kid Embiid, he got in foul trouble that game. I said, when he gets coached by Bill Self for a year, I guarantee you this kid's going to be a great player by the end of the year. And this team will be a great team. Because they didn't look good then. Guys were sick. And, uh, you know, when, when teams win a game, they think they're better. And then they watch them. At the end of the year, I said, you see that team now? Is that the same team that played us? They're all like, no. I said, that's why players need coaching. You need to be coached. And it was helpful for our guys, you know, who heard a lot about Embiid and, Wigg and Wiggins to, to say, well, those one and done guys are getting coached. I got it. I better listen and be coached. And it really helped our team. Jay, right here. <coughs> Jay, um, it seemed like you were, correct me if I'm wrong, you were one of the first coaches in, on a major D1 level to kind of go to four guard or small ball offense. I was wondering if uh, what in those early years did you see that kind of, you talked about how Daniel opened everything up and from a personnel standpoint, what did you feel like you were missing then that you, know, you needed to get for you, know, you guys to be able to play to where you're playing now offensively? You mean, are you saying from our, when we went from when we were four guards, what have we changed? Yes, like how, I'm trying to just get at the evolution of, of how you've made yeah, the offense yeah. into what it is. Well, we, we went four guards out of desperation. You know, our, our power forward, Curtis Sumter, uh, tore his ACL. And we, we had a Sweet 16 game coming up against uh, uh, North Carolina. So it was kind of out of desperation, but it worked. And, we, and then we said, whoa, this, this is something good here. Um, but we knew it, c it could only get us so far, and we needed, we needed a good big guy inside. And when that started, when we started to have some success, people started calling us guard you. And it was difficult to recruit good big men because they thought, I'm not going there, it's guard you. They don't. And, and we said to... Uh, Daniel Chafer, we, we had Dante Cunningham, who we actually recruited as a, a three-man, and he wound up being our five-man on a Final Four team. But we couldn't get any big guys to come. And I, and I remember going to Daniel Chafer and saying, some big guy is going to really benefit from playing with these guards because they can't double you. you got all these guards around you. you. Come play with them. And he's a really smart guy. He really thinks the game. He came in, and, and we moved to Yaru. We also did that with him. And he came in right after Daniel. And, and um, that, that's when we, when we got that big guy in the middle to play with those guards, I think that really solidified us as being a complete team. Stay on the left, Coach. Uh, Kevin Haskin, Topeka Capital Journal. Coach, how have you seen your defense progress this year? It's been pretty solid. And also, what do you see in the Kansas defense? Our defense has continually improved throughout the season. And it, it was a weak part. It was a a weakness early in the year. Our rebounding was a little bit of a weakness early in the year. I think um, we have some young guys, you know, always freshmen, Jalen Brunson, uh, Mikhail Bridges learning uh, our system. And uh, and then when Daniel got hurt, being able to play Daryl Reynolds and Mikhail Bridges more um, got us some size and length. So that that helped our defense. And, and I think that uh, that's really been really the, the key to our, our success is, is being able to play more guys with length and getting more experience. We, we've always marveled at, at Kansas's defense for, for years under, under Bill Self. They, they, are, they are physical, um, they are disciplined, and uh, they're very committed. You know, uh, you, you, you can see some committed defensive teams, but they don't have the the length and the athleticism to get it done. You can see some teams have some good athleticism and length, but they can be undisciplined. They, they've, got, they've got the package. And that, that's why they – what is the record? Is it 12 straight Big 12? I mean, that's absurd. That, that, you can only do that with great defense. Not good, great. Um, and to do that consistently, that's what it is. 
So, I mean, we really respect them for always being one of the best defensive teams in the country. Go to the right now. Coach, two-part question. Um, if you could expand, please, on the itinerary for the guys for tonight, <laughs> tomorrow. You no know, offense I, to Jalen. It was not a lot of I information. Don't think he I don't think I know. He knows. I know. I, that's, I figured. And then the second part would be, where did the saying, shoot them up and sleep in the streets, come from? Uh, um, what, what Jalen answered to you was really all he knew. Is we, we do. We are very boring. And you can ask our guys from Philly. We are the most boring team in the world in everything we do. Um, but we do the same thing all the time. We, we, we love being on the road. We actually just, all the coaches eat every meal together with, every, with the team every night. I mean, every meal, we all eat together. Coaches, players, we never go out separately as coaches. We, we enjoy that time we spend together on the road. We, we talk about life. We talk about basketball, not just our team. So that's what he's saying that, uh, you know, we'll do the same thing. So um, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll all eat breakfast together. <laughs> we'll um, meet a little bit, come back and eat lunch together. Uh, we'll watch film. We'll go to our shoot around. We'll come back and rest up. We'll come back, watch film again. We'll have our, um, our team chaplain does a little uh, service before each pregame meal. We eat our pregame meal at the same time. We leave to go at the same time. We do everything <laughs> exact. So it's a, it's a boring day, but it's what we do and we love it. What was your second part? I, I, read, I read a book one time, and um, I think it was Mike Reardon. I mean, is it Mike Reardon? No? But I think it was Mike Reardon. I just, did Kevin Grevy play for Buffalo? I think it was Mike Reardon. I just read up, up an NBA, an older NBA player said that saying. Mike Reardon did. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get this because I'm going to know. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm to find this out because I read it. And I just loved it. I just loved that saying. And it was that guy was that kind of player. And I, I think Mike Reardon was. But, um, and, and I just stole it. And I just said, I want our guys to, I always remembered as a player, if I felt the coach gave me the confidence to shoot the ball, um, I always felt like I played better. If I knew he wasn't going to take me out or wasn't going to be mad at me if I missed or if I took a bad shot. So I always wanted our players to have that confidence, and that's, that's, where we, that's what we use it for. And I never want them to fear having that game. If you're going to have a game where you shoot 8 for 11, you can't be afraid to have that game where you shoot 1 for 11. And if your coach doesn't let you do it, you're never going to have that 8 for 11 game. That's our, that's our theory. I better find out where I got that. I count on you guys for that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to find this out. I think it might have been in Connie Hawkins' book. I'm going to get it. In the back, Coach. Coach uh, Harold Bouchard with the Salina Journal. A couple questions. Uh, during the course of the season, obviously different conferences, different parts of the country, uh, are you aware of, of a Kansas, uh, what, they're do what they're trying to accomplish? And second question, uh, a couple months ago they inserted Landon Lucas into the starting lineup, and they've kind of taken off since then. Can you just address what – you see on tape what he brings to the table? You know, I, I, did, I can't tell you who was starting before Landon, but I, I've, I, I watch all those games on ESPN, so I, I've, I've seen so many great – and they've played in some epic battles already. Someone asked me about I – didn't, I didn't call this a heavyweight fight. Someone asked me that, and I, I just said, yeah, I could see how you could do that. But they have played in some heavyweight – battles in that conference and you watch them all on you know if you go look for the games of Iowa State Oklahoma games Baylor games Texas games it's 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 crazy Michigan State but what I do see that Landon does is um, he knows his role and he's very intelligent about it but yet he's talented enough that if they need to go to him He's good enough to be in Perry Ellis's role. He'll probably be in that role next year. And, um, but yet, he's good enough to be in that role, but yet he, he plays a complementary role where he's always on that weak side block, always offensive rebounding, always makes good decisions. 
You can go to him as a post-up player. That's what makes them. Someone asked me a question earlier. Said, "Why do you don't double Perry Ellis?" That, that he he could be that good if that was his role on that team in a different way. He could do it in the post. He's a really talented kid. Jay, I don't I don't want to misstate this question because if you go to the Elite Eight, you've had a great, great, great season. But can you kind of put into words the difference between the eight and the four yeah. in terms of? I mean, this, these guys might not care because whenever they lose, they're going to be devastated. But if, if, the if, if they do. But, I mean, from a, from a standpoint of alumni and, and the community and yeah. coaching, when you look back, I mean, the four is when they start, you know, painting stuff on the gym wall. Yeah. Is, is, is there a difference there? Huge. It, it's, it's monumental. And I'm in, it's interesting you say that they don't know it. I, I hope they don't because I, I want them to play this like the next game, you know. And, but – Outside of here, it's I mean, and outside of just the game, it, it the to get to a Final Four is monumental. It, it's um, the whole week leading up for the university is great for the alumni. Um, in in college basketball, getting to the Final Four for some reason, um, you know, I think if you're in the NBA and you get to the finals, it's if you don't win, it's not that big of a deal. But getting to a Final Four, is, it's so big, it's, 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 uh, it's defining. You know, if you played on a Final Four team, uh, I, I mentioned to our, our players, all of our young assistants from our Final Four team, the young guys, like the graduate assistants, the video guy, they all are major assistants on major college teams. And I, I told our guys, because people want people that were associated with the Final Four. So it's it's um, it's really defining. It really is, and and I don't think, I don't. I, I hope they don't understand the difference. But if you get there, if you get there and experience one time, you will know, you know. And and if these guys were lucky enough to get there, the guys that come back and play, if they play, if they get to play in this game, they'll know the difference of how big it is. Hi, uh, David Walsh with ESPN. On Wednesday, you talked about the importance of momentum, and I wanted to see what you saw on your team last night when Miami made a run in the first half, Joey made that game close, and how will momentum affect you guys tomorrow? Yeah, you know, there's two kinds of moment momentum. The short-term momentum within a game, um, which I thought uh, Miami started to, to, to get some. We put Josh Hart back in the game. That was our answer to momentum, <laughs> to get Josh Hart back in there with two fouls. And I, and I thought it really helped. And it, it could have hurt. He could have got his third foul, and they would have kept it, go they would have kept it going. Um, but after that, I think we maintained it. I think there was a play where Josh Hart had a layup, missed it, got his fourth foul. That could have changed it, and I thought we responded well. So I thought we held on to the momentum. The momentum in a, in a season for us right now is, is really strong. You know, we're playing good basketball, we're getting better every game. I think we talked about earlier with Kansas, I think it's the same way. Just they're on longer momentum. They've won, I think, 17 in a row. That, that's momentum, you know. That really – that helps too. You know, that helps you within games. So I think um, that positive momentum for both of us is important. And if, if either one of us gets it during a game, the others – good teams have a way of breaking that. Mark Herman from Newsday. Jay, uh, having been here as a coach of a mid-major, what did that do for you? And and what advice would you give to someone who is making that leap, like the like the man who is coaching Rutgers right now? Um, getting here at the mid-major makes you appreciate it um, more than if than if you only started at at the high level. You know, if if you've never experienced playing in those playing games. The pressure in those playing games is incredible, in those championship games for the conference tournament. And I've told I've told our staff that some of the guys have been with some Mike Nardi, Baker Dunleavy. They played at Villanova, you know. They've coached at Villanova. I said to them, you you have no idea what that what that pressure is and how much you appreciate going. And I when we go to the tournament, I always look at it that way. I look at it as as if I was at Hofstra. Like, just don't ever take this for granted. That, remember remember the feeling when you were at Hofstra and you got here, how big that was. And if, and for Steve Peichel, I think that's going to be a real value to him coaching 
Rutgers to, to have that uh, feeling of the pressure. There's no game you play at the high level that's the same pressure as that game. And, uh, and then to be able to appreciate it when you make it. Okay, squeeze one more in real quick. I appreciate that. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a heavy question, I guess. It's about Chris and, you know, have, have you had to take any special care with him in a sort of family sense? You know, he's got a different sort of experience than most bring uh, to your program, I'm sure. And a lot of these guys in the locker room, they talk about family. And uh, I wonder if some of that is especially for him, in your opinion, or how you think it, at least, at least what you think it, it does for him and what it contributes to. He actually, he really does have a unique situation, but it's, it's a positive one. Um, his, his mom and dad still stay in, in, in great um, communication with him. I, I literally text with his mom almost every day. She was a college coach, and it's never she. Today's text was, keep your foot on his throat. It's, 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 it's a coach, you know. It's, it's, she talks like a coach, you know, and she's amazing. And his dad's real, still real close from him. And then he's got the Brits who, um, you know, I see them sometimes at our games when I know North Carolina's playing. I don't know how they figured out. I know they go down to North Carolina all the time to see Nate. But they, they treat him, uh, you know, he's definitely one of theirs, you know. Um, and so he really has two families, and he's, and he's, he's a really strong kid. He's got great character because he's got, he's got two sets of parents that are great character. It's, 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 a, it's a pure positive. All right, Coach, we're out of time. Appreciate it. Thank you, it. guys. See you tomorrow.